This one's gonna be a winner, I promise. Very sleek, very sexy, very cool. We're gonna paint all walls and all ceilings. I'm Darren Jett. Here are five living rooms, and I'm going to give advice on how to spruce them up. The first things that I notice about these living rooms is that they're all white. I am seeing a lot of clutter, some interesting furniture arrangements. Looks like we might have some children involved, which will be a fun challenge. All right, so here is Carrie and Carrie's living room. Carrie tells us that she's a mom of two young kids and they have two living rooms in the house and she wants this to be the adult room. I would encourage her to go in a direction that pulls in a bit of Rose Uniac's design. She mixes a lot of these really beautiful sofas with the rolled arm, but next to it might be an antique wood table. This room honestly just needs some life to it. You know, she has a lot of really, really good essentials. Like the bones are there. I don't see a coffee table right here. There's no side table over here. There's no lamp. If this is an adult room, let's make it an adult focused room. Why don't we have a sort of bar area over here in this corner kind of tucked away? Maybe it has like some cool wheels or something that can be wheeled around. Maybe it's a brass table. There's actually an outlet right here. So it's kind of the perfect place to even add a lamp that goes on top, you know? And when it's stationary, it has a light on it. And at nighttime, that can be on a dimmer and you get a little bit of ambiance in that corner of the room that's currently non-functioning. Currently, the windows are completely bare. In a room where you are entertaining with other adults, especially in the evening, imagine if the lights are off, what that starts to look like. You can start to see your reflection. It feels kind of eerie. An easy solution, just kind of the first step to tackle that and to also make the room softer would be to add drapery. I would hang a rod pretty high up on all of these windows like so, and I would have that rod go out beyond the window. That way, whenever you have curtains, they can be something like this. Whenever they're fully opened, they go floor to ceiling, and they go left and right of the window to make the window just feel a bit larger. I think what she needs to do for the color, I, I actually quite like the sort of neutral that she's having. If Carrie was interested in going a little bit further, I might do something that has a bit of a plaster effect. Maybe it's like a lime wash on the wall that just gives a little bit of life to everything so it doesn't feel so flat and so new. You know, she has this great area right here. I think this is probably her front door or her front door is right here and this is probably where they walk into the living room. Let's hang some art here. Maybe over the bar, we have two smaller pieces like this, something that's a bit more intimate and you kind of like walk up to it and you feel like you have to engage with it. Carrie also said that she's gonna use this room to watch television. She's wanting to put the TV up here. I'm not someone who is a proponent of a television over a fireplace, but if that's the only place for things, then so be it. No matter where a TV goes, especially in, in a room where you're entertaining, where you're gonna have drinks, where you might serve hors d'oeuvres or something like that, you're not gonna have the TV on all the time. I would suggest to Carrie doing something where we can actually have another rod up here and maybe we hang a sort of tapestry. Whenever it's closed, it gives a bit of texture and life to you know, the space above the fireplace. If she's leaning into this kind of off-white, sort of chalky world, I think could be really, really quite nice. I would say, you know, do some sort of natural rug underfoot. You know, maybe it's something that's more of a jute or a hemp or a sisal. It just creates a bit of texture underfoot. So that's Carrie and we're giving her a living room that is a great place to entertain. So here we have Carol. She loves to entertain with a big group of people and she has a beautiful living room to do just that. She's come to us and she's like, you know, my furniture, it's a bit stiff. I have this beautiful living room, but we never use this space at all. And I love to people over, but it's just not comfortable. It's not inviting. She also said that there's a space next door that's more of like a dining area and the flow is just not good. So what we gotta do, we gotta attack all of this. Carol has this big sofa right here that's very boxy. It has these arms that come out, kind of blocks you from moving around. And she has these really big chairs that do the same thing. What I would like to do is to really center a new seating arrangement around that fireplace. I think what we can do is kind of create a sort of sofa moment that does something like so. These 
kind of sofas, you know, you see them every now and then, sort of Kagan-inspired form, perhaps. This really helps with creating a more inviting space, right? When you walk in the door, you see this form that kind of takes you around almost like an arm, you know, kind of giving you a hug, not to sound too cheesy. What I would do is, you know, create a sort of lamp over here, have the coffee table more or less where it is right now, directly from the fireplace, and then have a much softer chair. I would have another lamp sort of flanking this chair that kind of goes along with this, sort of flanking the fireplace. We have this French modern situation going on down here in the furniture. I would love to combat that a little bit. Maybe we do a sort of Italian Murano glass chandelier. Maybe it's a sort of greenish color, or maybe it's kind of pink blown glass that sort of hangs from the ceiling. I would have some really cool little shades on it, maybe they're shirt, fabric, to just give a little bit of tradition. Or maybe we add some fabric on this railing up here and just kind of soften that a bit, just give it a little bit of drama. I think we should probably add another lamp on this side of the sofa. And maybe we add like a kind of small, like little martini cocktail table off to the side of the sofa. I think a space like this could really be much more impactful if we weren't afraid of color. We're gonna paint all walls and all ceilings. I would go in a world that's a bit more terracotta. I want rich, I want moody, I want drama. You know, this architecture, it's quite imposing in a way. And if we do something that's a bit warmer and a bit richer and darker, frankly, it'll just make it feel a bit more intimate. When you have something that's very light and white, sometimes it can just feel a little bit too big and a little bit too impersonal. I think we should think about the sofa as being kind of an off-white. Maybe it's a slight kind of beige color. It's still warm, but it's overall very light. So everything on the floor is kind of light and everything on the walls and above is a bit darker and a bit more moody. So this is Carol. I think we really gave her a nice update, a nice refresh on what she had. We got rid of her heavy, boxy furniture, gave her something more of a serpentine, kind of soft shape below. Carol is gonna be throwing the most fabulous parties in this living room, and you know that I'm gonna be the last one to leave. So here we have Brendan. Brendan comes to us with a few things, a lot of clutter, it looks like. He's just trying to kind of declutter his life. Everything just needs to have a home and everything needs to have a place. So what I love about this space is this really cute little cat and I think everything else can go. What I would do is I wanna give him a sort of 70s bachelor pad fantasy, a little bit of a bigger sofa along this wall. Okay, something with clean lines. Maybe we do like a really kind of sexy, like black leather. Let's give you some storage. You clearly need some storage, so let's try to maximize that. Underneath the TV, why don't we give you a credenza that runs pretty much the full length or as much as we can possibly get. Think about it almost being like a monolith, flat panel, maybe it's all black, maybe it's stainless steel. I wanna give you something that has a little bit of an edge. I feel like, Brendan, you, you have some edge to you that I wanna pull out. This desk situation has got to go. It looks like you have two levels on the desk. You know, they make these things today that are really cool. A lot of my clients really love them. They're standing desks. Maybe we lean into a bit of this uh, high-tech movement, you know, that was very prominent in the 70s, championed by people like Joe Dorso. He used office furniture and medical furniture for actual living spaces. So maybe next to your beautiful new sofa that we're gonna get you, you actually have a sort of cube. You know, it's like a filing cabinet. Stainless steel, again, like very sleek, very sexy, very cool. But of course, it gives you everything that you need to get that stuff out of the way. Let's give you a nice coffee table in the middle of the space too. You know, they have coffee tables now that have drawers. I am suggesting a more minimalist route based upon the space. Minimalism means clean. Minimalism means not fussy. Things being more monotone. If you go to the AD archives, you'll see a lot of these kind of 70s inspired apartments and a lot of them are white. They're very minimal, but there is still a moodiness to them that I want to pull from for Brendan. He does have this really great kind of French door situation that goes out to a back patio, which is really quite nice. Let's in a ton of natural light. I think that you're going to use this outdoor patio a ton. I certainly would. I don't want these things blocking my way. Let's just do curtains on a very, very simple track, mounted as high as possible, wall to wall. It'll make this window honestly feel like it's a full window wall, which is really cool. And that's Brendan. We gave him a very cool, very minimalist bachelor pad, and we did it all based on his cat.
we have Dan, and Dan has one adorable little tot right here and another one on the way. The kids have kind of taken over the living room, and he's really just trying to figure out a way where the kids' things don't always spill out into the space. I think with Dan, the solution is gonna have to be pretty simple. There are a ton of toys, and I'm sure the little kid loves playing, loves his life. Dan probably put this together kind of in a rush, and things have just accumulated over time. That's totally fine, that happens in every family. There's a sort of cart right here that has some books. It feels a bit temporary to me, kind of serving as a sort of side table situation. And we also have a bookcase right here, which I like the idea of that bookcase, but maybe there's a way where we can combine these two things into something that feels more permanent. Why don't we do a sort of bookcase situation along this long wall? Something that has some storage along the bottom would be fantastic. You know, think about like a kind of cabinet below that's closed, and you could actually have some of the toys kind of live in there, you know, and whenever he wants to use them, he can pull them out. And then think about shelves up at the top where we could have, you know, books, we can have children's books, we can have photos of the kid as he gets older. What I would also do, because we're sort of creating a sort of library kind of play moment over here, I would move a singular chair by this bookcase. You know, maybe it has like a nice lamp beside of it. And then what I would do, I would move the larger sofa underneath the window, something that's a bit of a simpler profile, not so heavy, so that you have a focal point with a nice window and with a nice sofa underneath. Maybe it's something that can be slip covered, and if an accident happens, which it does in life, then you can take it off, put it in the wash, it'll be fine, you put it back on, and it's like nothing ever happened. Add some simple drapery, again, doing a long rod, high up to the ceiling, curtains that come down, something very simple, very effective, just to make more of a focal point for more adult situations. Right now, Dan has this rug. The rug is just, it's really, really colorful. And I can just imagine like, you know, some of these toys landing on here like a Lego block and we forget to clean it up at the end of the day. If we can keep it neutral, then all of these other things up here, they don't cause so much um, visual headache. So that's Dan, and we have created a living room for him where his children can have their things kind of tucked away, and everything is a neutral base, so there's not a lot of cacophony that happens. Here we have Mona. Mona is really giving a lot of energy right now, but her space over here, unfortunately, is not. So we have to make the space match Mona. This is her studio space. She lives, works, sleeps, all of that in one space. So, we have to soften up the space. It's just way too stark. So let's just add some very, very, very sheer curtains right here. I would really like to take advantage of these big windows right here by having a nice big table like this. She has a very small sofa, which I think is kind of a nice place to put the sofa. But I think what we could do is make it a little bit bigger. Let's get you a very comfortable day bed. You know, we can do something where it is basically a full-size mattress. Maybe it has some storage underneath. You know, you can pop it open. You can like access your shoes or, you know, baskets or something underneath. By doing things like this, where we have the bed and the sofa do double duty, we're able to give her much more space in this area for things like yoga and her exercising. She probably has a dresser over here, kind of tucked in this zone, a nice lamp or two on there. Maybe she has some floating shelves above that for all of her books. And she has her table desk right by the light so that when she's working, she can have that beautiful light coming in. Maybe the rug could fill the space a bit more. Maybe we think about, you know, this is such a funny shaped apartment. We do the idea of having that offset rug that really creates one whole zone. I would definitely say if you have a unique layout like this, if you can explore a custom rug. Look, it's a very challenging apartment to design. It has an interesting shape. It's a very small space. So that's Mona in her challenging studio apartment. I hope we gave her what she asked for, which was a bed and a living area. And I hope that she's dancing this much when she walks through the door. So a living room can have so many different uses. People watch TV in their living room. People eat in their living room. People have their children playing games. They have people over having cocktails. A living room really is that multifunction room. And I hope today we've been able to address all of those things. 